Would you please pray with me? Heavenly Father, we, we thank you for this time and this place and this opportunity to be here in your presence. And we know that you want to send your Holy Spirit to us. And we ask that you would, you would do that and that you would o- use that Holy Spirit to open us up to your words of love and forgiveness and life. Guide us now in this time and, and show us who you are. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, Uh, last week our message title was, That Can't Be Right, and we talked about how God sometimes uh, puts things in our lives that we just think can't be right, and we we actually talked about Jonah and that that door B at the bottom of the basement there, uh, and that he just didn't believe that we could go through that door. Sometimes in our lives we, we don't trust that there's grace on the other side and we say well that can't be right but the thing that really should surprise us the thing that that in our minds we should really say well that can't be right is that jesus loves us enough to die for us it doesn't make sense from a human perspective that can't be right but it is That's God's plan for us. The task for the week last week was to open the door in front of you. It is a door of grace. See what God is putting on the other side. And the question for the week, do you believe in God's grace for you? Do do you believe in God's grace for you for eternity? And do you believe in God's grace for you now in this moment? Did anyone have any thoughts or comments or questions over the last week? Okay, then we are going to move right along. Today's message title is Flying Colors, as in passing with flying colors. Like you took a test and you you passed it with flying colors. We're going to talk tonight about passing the test But we're also going to talk about failing the temptation. You see, because I would tell you that the two are very closely related. A test and a temptation. What is the difference between a test and a temptation? Well, some may disagree with me. But I'm going to suggest to you that a test, if God is going to test someone, he wants them, like a a teacher in school, he wants them to pass the test. On the other hand, the devil wants you to fail the temptation. You see, I believe that the difference between the tempt and the test is actually in the heart of the tempter or tester. God tests and the devil tempts. The tempt or the test reveals the heart of the tempter or tester. And the response to that tempt or to that test reveals the heart of the tempted or tested. How we respond to the temptation, how we respond to the test reveals a lot about ourselves. In our first reading today, we read about Abraham and and how God tested him. But before we get into reading a portion of that here today, I want you to remember what we talked about last week, that, that Abraham was... What Abram at that time was 99 years old, and, and God said, you're going to have a child. And he said, well, that can't be right. And God made it happen. But then in our scripture reading for today, God says, well, take that miracle child, that child that I gave you, and now kill him in this place that I tell you. Let's take a look at Genesis chapter 22. After these things, God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, here I am. He said, 
Take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains, which I shall tell you. Abraham just got this child. I mean, we don't know how old Isaac was when this happened, but, but Abraham had waited 100 years for this child, and now God was going to ask him to take him. But we know from the story that, that Abraham does trust God. He, maybe he said, well, if God can give me a child when I'm 100 years old, he can still save this child no matter what. And so Abraham obeyed, and he took him to the mountain. And continuing in verse 10, Then Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here I am. He said, Do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, seeing you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. Abraham clearly passed the test. He did what God wanted him to do, and God, he, was, he was prepared to take his son's life. And God spared him from doing that. Abraham passed the test. Now, let's take a jump to our gospel reading, where we find Jesus, after he was baptized, went out into the wilderness to be tempted by Satan. In Mark chapter 1, the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness, and he was in the wilderness 40 days, being tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild animals, and the angels were ministering to him. The devil was tempting Jesus. It was not a test, it was a tempt. Satan wanted him to fail. Now, First of all, one of the things I want you to understand about this, that that, that word cast or, or drove out, that, that the Spirit drove Jesus out into the wilderness, is the same Greek word that, that when Jesus cast out a demon, it was the same kind of idea. He threw it out. And so the Spirit chucked Jesus out into the wilderness. He just gets baptized and... The Spirit throws him into the wilderness to be tempted. Now, normally, we have a party when we have a baptism. But Jesus went to temptation. And in fact, that's probably not too dissimilar than what happens in your life, in my life. As soon as we, as soon as we are baptized, as soon as we come to faith, as, every time that we grow in our faith, the temptation grows still further think that the Christian life should be easy, but God doesn't have a real good marketing scheme. Become a Christian and you're going to be tempted more. That's the truth. But unlike you and me, Jesus responded positively. He passed not only the test, but he passed the temptation now, you and I, we don't always know if it's God testing us or Satan tempting us. We've got to understand that Satan is lying in wait for us, trying to ambush us. While God may test us, God does in fact test us. Not just Abraham, in Judges chapter 3. Now these are the nations that the Lord left to test Israel by them. That is, all in Israel who had not experienced all the wars in Canaan. You see, the, the children of Israel had left, had left Egypt 40 years earlier and they came through the wilderness and, and God left some, some nations there and he, he left them there to test the children of Israel. And not only that, the, the entire wilderness experience, all 40 years of it, was basically one giant test in Deuteronomy chapter 8. 
And you shall remember the whole way the Lord your God has led you these 40 years in the wilderness, that he might humble you, testing you to know what was in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. God tested them. He, he made them go hungry. He made them go thirsty. He, he, he had all kinds of things, and he wanted to test them to see if they would pass or if they would fail. But it really wasn't for Jesus' own good, or God's own good. You see, we know God knows all things. So why would God have to test the children of Israel? Why would God have to test Abraham? Why does God have to test us if he already knows? He tests us so that we know. Not so that he knows, but so that we know. God does test you. David writes in Psalm 11, The Lord tests the righteous, but his soul hates the wicked and the one who loves violence. In Jeremiah chapter 17, I, the Lord, search the heart and test the mind and give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his deeds. Jesus tested his disciples in John chapter 6. Lifting up his eyes then and seeing that a large crowd was coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, where are we to buy bread so that these people may eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he would do. Jesus tested his disciples. God tested the children of Israel. God tests you and me, not so that he knows where, where our heart is, but so that we know where our heart is. Whether we pass or fail, it helps us to understand where our heart is. In the temptation of Jesus, the, the, the battle between the king of light and the prince of darkness, Jesus passes the temptation. And he does it for your good and for my good. Because we fail in the temptation all the time. We are the ones who, who can't pass the test so often. But God wants you to pass the test. And he wants you to know. And if you, if you don't take anything else out of this message, I want you to know that God does not leave you alone in your wilderness. God is there with you during the temptation and during the testing. It is difficult, but you are not alone. In James chapter 1, Blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial, for when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life which God has promised to those who love him. And watch how James connects testing and tempting here. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted with evil. And he himself tempts no one, but each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desire. You are not alone. God will test you. When you have stood the test, you will know. God does not tempt you. He tests you. But you and I, we are in, enticed by our own desires. You see, the truth is, we want to fail. You want to to fail. That's why you take that extra brownie. That's why you sin. That's why you do those things because you want that more than more than you want to obey God. We are enticed by our own desires. God understands this. Jesus understands this. He understands what it is like to be tempted. He understands what it is like to resist that temptation. In Hebrews chapter 4, 
for we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. We can have confidence. When Satan came to Adam and Eve, Adam failed. He failed in a beautiful garden. When Satan came to Jesus in the wilderness, Jesus succeeded. He did it for you and for me. He passed that test so that when he was hung on a cross, he was innocent and it made, it made his sacrifice worthwhile for you and for me. If Jesus had sinned, it would have just been another guy dying. But because he refused to fall into temptation, his sacrifice was enough for all of us. God comes into our life to strengthen us. Paul writes in Romans chapter 12, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. God uses testing in our life so that we may know what is good and acceptable and perfect. God uses testing in our lives so that we can know His will. God uses testing in our, in our lives so that we can know our hearts and know His heart. But He will never give you a test or a temptation that you cannot pass. In fact, God doesn't give you a test, never gives you a test that you can't pass. He's always there, always with you. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, no temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. And with the temptation, he will always provide the way of escape that you may be able to endure it. I started this message, I began with, with saying that, that God tests you and the, and the te difference between a test and a tempt is the, is the heart of the tester or the tempter. God does test you. But now I want to help you understand a way to help you get through the test or the tempt. Because a test and a tempt can look identical. So believe that each one is a test from God. That he is there with you. And this is just an opportunity for you to show your love for him. If you put your own desires, or if you stop being enticed by your own flesh, Trust in God that he's there with you. You see, you are not alone. You don't have to go into your wilderness alone. Your wilderness of testing or tempting, it truly doesn't make a whole lot of difference because if you believe that God gives you his Holy Spirit, not only will he forgive you when you fail, but he will strengthen you to pass. You and I, we have all kinds of things in our lives that will tempt us. Satan wants to tempt you. Satan wants you to fail. He, he prowls around like a roaring lion. But God wants you to pass the test. God will be with you. God, God gives you the cheat sheet for the test. It is God himself who will pass the test for you. As we are driven out, as we are cast out, chucked out into our wilderness of testing and tempting, know that you're not alone. That God takes care of you in that wilderness. He will be with you and he will strengthen you in every way that you may need. 
Okay. Comments, questions, thoughts. are not very chatty. Oh, Bill. Because God does the testing, it can never be anything bad. And if it is difficult and we can't lift that barbell, we, it, we have his grace, right? If it's too heavy, if it's beyond our capability, yes. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, here's your task for the week. Pass the test. Look at it all as a test rather than a temptation. You want to fail the temptation, look at it as a test, and perhaps you can pass. And the question of the week, ask yourself honestly, do you prefer the test or the tempt? Which one is it? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your forgiveness. And we know that we fail and we fall into temptation every day. Give us the strength of your Holy Spirit to not only be able to pass the test and to avoid the temptation, but give us your Holy Spirit so that we can have the confidence to know that when we do fail, you still love us and you still forgive us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, and Ken is going to bring our offering.